It's a lot of stuff on the internet about the legacy of one of the most notorious housing projects in Brooklyn, LG, Lafayette Gardens. I think it's time we hear that story from those who actually created that legacy. So get ready. Gen Pop is in the building. The real story of LG is on the way. And it's crazy. For black people, young black, young black people living in the, in the world, man, those, those 80s was, was crazy. Uh, when I like, listen to some of your videos, it's like a movie. They're like movies, mini movies, because they take me there. You feel me? I remember they was coming to the crib and I was thinking to myself, yo, I cannot let my heart see these dudes coming over here and be fighting. It was like uh, any little thing I might get kicked out. So uh, I remember uh, being mad nervous, mad shook, man. Like, damn, what the hell am I going to do? And all of a sudden it was out there in front of the crib and the dude from Full Force came out there with the Jerry Tills, right? Bull like a little big dude, he came out. It was like both of them, the two, one of them, two of them, they came out. And it was like, yo, what's up, what y'all doing over here? Whatever, whatever, because it was in front of the crib. And they told him that it was there for me or whatever, or whatever, you know, it was a beef or whatever. And it was like, we'll take it around the corner. Now I'm shook, lads. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? I'm by myself. And he, this dude, whoever he came around, his whole block came around the corner. Um, and, and me. And the dudes from Full Force was like, yo, take it around the corner. So we went, we went around the corner on Linda Boulevard and we started fighting. That's why I told you, I had, at that point, I had, had, I had not had, had a fight. Nothing like that. And there's only a few fights that I had that was that brutal, like, intense or fast, you know what I'm saying? He came at me, just rushed me, punching me, going crazy, kicking, going crazy, right? And he was talking major shit, so it was like, his, 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 uh, his mental game was crazy because he was Jamaican and what he was saying, he was rushing at me and I was almost like a deer in the headlights at first. I was like, yo, this can't be happening. I was just in Brownsville. <laughs> I was just living in Brownsville where everything was everything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's Brownsville, but it was my home. And now I'm here on Linda Boulevard between East 46 and East 45th, fighting with a dude going crazy. He just rushed me. Kick, punch, he was kid going crazy. And then I just went into my brows and shit, my boxing shit. Because one thing about the veil, everybody was back in the days was slap boxing, you know what I'm saying, doing some type of hand, 52. It was a, it was like something we we loved and we, we had fun with. Like like we watched the karate flicks. You know what I'm saying? We watched the karate flicks, three o'clock, we come outside, we try to do karate, come through. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, everybody a silent monk. But that's how we was with the boxing. But now he, I'm in, I'm in Flatbush. Dude rushed me with the kick. I start boxing, fighting, doing my thing. And I hit him. I got him down. We start fighting. Got him on the floor. I got him on the floor. I got on top. We was both actually on the floor fighting. And then um, I got on top of him. I was lucky in this one. But I've been lucky a lot in that sense. Whereas I was quick to get on my feet and um, or get on top of the person and, uh, and, and, and secure the win. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, when we... You know, that happened a few times, but we was on the floor, got on top of him, and uh, started giving him the work. I gave him the business, man. I started pounding his face through the ground. And uh, as I was pounding him, I was I was thinking to myself, like, this is this is this is a different type of fighting. This is this is uh this is this is gonna lead to something too. You feel me? Like this ain't gonna end here. I was I just had to go go in because then now. Everybody looking at me. Everybody, the crowd around me looking at me. I get off them, pound them, pound them, pound them. They get me off. Them. They take me back. You know, I go, I go back to my house around the corner. And um, yo, my heart was racing last. My heart was beating like I was going to have a heart attack. I, was, I, was, I didn't know what to do. I knew that this was going to be something more. I had already been living around here now for like, I want to say, I want to say like seven, eight months. Um, had seen, you know, seen things, how it resulted to a, a young dude I knew getting shot at, shot. It was crazy. It was it was fast over in East Flatbush. So, um, 
uh, you had to do from Troy Ave right there. They was on it. And I saw Spliff, Spliff is from over there. You know what I'm saying? They was deep. Troy Ave was deep back in the days. Um, so, so I remember after that, they came and they came back. But this time, it was like a day or so later, he came back. Man, it might have been like a day or two later. I remember it was like a rainy day. And they came through. And uh, it was deeper. It was deep this time. It was deeper than it was last time. And, and when they came through, I, I was looking out the window. It was like a rainy looking day. And it was one dude I looked through. And I looked, I was looking at the faces. And it was one dude had freckles all over his face. Damn, who is that? You got a killer with him. I'm like thinking to myself, damn, you know what I mean? Who is this dude? I never seen no, you know, dude like that. And I was like, damn, man, they really want to get me. Came outside, we had our words. What you, mean, you mean? What you mean? The dude with the freckles was just looking mad, intimidating? Yeah, but in my in a sense, because I was like, yo, like. I hadn't seen nobody like that, you know, I don't know, maybe, I mean, I'm sure I had seen people with freckles, but this dude was a tall, skinny dude with freckles, and, 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 I, and, and I remember, I, from what I remember, and I was told they had a hammer on him, you feel me? So I was in, and that, but I knew that was coming, Laz, mm. I knew was, this was going to go to that level because I had been around these dudes, and they was playing with that, they was playing with the guns and all that in Flatbush. Early, you know what I mean? Early, early. Like, Brownsville, we was on some fighting shit. They was playing with the tools early. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, I knew this gonna get me shot. You know what I mean? So when they came around, and it was that it was that gloomy day. It was that rainy day. And he, and, they, and I seen him, and I was like, damn, he must be the shooter. That's what I was thinking of myself. He must be the shooter. You know what I'm saying? They went and got this crazy looking dude with freckles, and it just, it just, it, it just stood out. So mind you, the next year, it's my sophomore year in high school. Now I gotta go to Wingate, you feel me? Cause I'm living over there. It was like, yo, I'm gonna go to Boys and Girls. I ain't know where I was going. So I ain't go back to Lockland. I was done at Lockland for everything, for, for, for my, my behavior, um, tuition, everything. I was all downhill with that. So uh, I was like, damn, man, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what school I was gonna go to. So I wind up going to Wingate. And when I went to Wingate, I was just like, damn. I was um I was in I was in a situation where I was like, it's a new school. I wasn't really familiar with you know with with the, with the people. I was like, damn, how this gonna go? But 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 living in Flatbush, what I had learned last was that it was a lot of West Indian people. So I was like, yo, um, it's a new culture and but this is a new school. How I'm gonna fear in the school. And when I went to the school, I was bugging. I was shook. First day, I was sitting next to this dread. He had to be like 40 some years old, 30 years old. Here I was a kid, you know, 15 years old, 14, 15. Here, here I am, it's a grown man in my classroom, full dread. You know, I was like, men go to school or whatever, you know, adults. And um, I was like, yo, I ain't gonna make it in this shit, bro. This is gonna be hard, you know what I'm saying? Like, my school days is numbered. Um, I also remember I had met this dude, I don't want to say his name, but he was a cool dude. Uh, and he, 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 had, he, had a, uh, he had a Uzi in the in the bag in, in school. He had a Uzi in the class. We used to social studies, man. I think he dead though, man. His name was, man, he was a good dude. I mean, he was cool with me. We was, like, we was in school together. And he brought an Uzi to school, champ. And he showed me the Uzi right in, right in class. I never forgot that, champ. I was like, yo, that's real? He was like, yeah, it's real. You know, he was a cool dude. He used to wear, he, used to, um, he had two, he had two gold fronts and he used to wear a lot of polo. And I remember he got into it with, with, with some dudes from the school because he was kind of like, I think he was like president of Utica. I want I to say something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember him being from like Utica and president or something like that. But uh, yeah, man, he was a cool dude. So he had he had got locked up while we was in high school. Like, like, like he went to I don't know, Spafford or something like that. And he had seen somebody that we knew from school. It was crazy, bro. It was it was it was the '80s, last. And like when I when I when I listen to your channel, when I listen to your videos, I don't miss one. Uh, I always be like bugging because you take me right there. You take me to where it was so. It was so uh it was a it was a unique time in life, you know what I'm saying, for 
for uh, for black people, young black, young black people living in the in the world, man. Those, those 80s was was crazy. Uh, when I like, listen to some of your videos, it's like a movie. They're like movies, mini movies, because they take me there. You feel me? Um, and that's how I felt. Like when I went to Wingate, and I was living in that. I was living in a town, like I was living in a time where it was bringing guns to school. People was getting clapped in school. Uh, you go to jail, come out on the weekend. I mean, come out, come back to school. It was crazy. Uh, I survived that shit, bro. So come to find out, lads, what happened was, and when I go to Wingate, guess what? The dude with the freckles go there. <laughs> You feel me? So I see the dude with the freckles. So I'm like, yo, that's the shooter. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm like, yo, that's the shooter that they can. So come to find out, yo, these dudes was a graffiti writing crew, champ, right? So they was a they was really, they wrote graffiti. They were always, always around different places. And we, you know what I'm saying? He was in one of my classes. So we brought up, well, I don't know, somehow we brought up talking, whatever, we started taking or whatever, whatever. We got cool. Man, yo, yo, champ, your last. I spoke to him yesterday, champ, for like an hour, man. It's, it's like, it's amazing how life will take you some places, you know what I mean? You never know, like, who would have ever thought. We, I'm 50 years old. I think he like 52. Who you talking about, you know? the kid with the freckles? Yes, brother. <laughs> the kid with what, the freckles. How you, how you found him? Yo, bro, it was crazy. Now, listen to this. So high school, we taking it. We take now. We was always we was we got cool. We got cool in high school. We could we got cool. Like we start bugging out. We start hanging out, going on missions, uh, going out of town. Uh, we went to Virginia together. I had family in Virginia. He had family in Virginia. We came down. We went down to Virginia together. We was trying to survive, champ. We was doing whatever we could. You know what I mean? Uh, he had a he had a step brother that was uh, you know basically he was hustling. And, you know, he, he basically looked, you know, he put us in the game. He put us in the game and we were doing what we was doing. And we just started riding out from high school. He went to the, he went to, well, I think it was like, his mom's put him in the military. And uh, that's when I had to, I started boxing. That's how, like, I was like 16, 17. I started boxing. His mom was like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all going, y'all getting arrested, y'all doing this in the 30s malls, made them join the military. And then I got into the boxing, man, and uh, we always kept in contact. And then we wound up becoming like roommates. Uh, I got an apartment. But we had, we, man, it was so much shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. We, it was so much drama. But, but, man, but he was always my man, but he always had like his people and me might not click. You feel me? So, it was always something like that. Like, I'm like, damn, me and, that, and that's my man. And I, and I went out for a li I went out on a limb for him a few times. Like, he had caught a case in D.C. He was facing, uh, he was facing life, man. And I was up at the time, and I got him a lawyer. It was $50,000, man. I got him a lawyer. He took it to trial. He been, he won. You know what I'm saying? He beat the case. Uh, he was facing life. And, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and that was crazy. That was crazy, too, because... Uh, at right soon after that, we fell out again. You know what I mean? On, on some some sucker shit. Like I felt like, but it is what it is. You know, I love him. That's my boy. But you know, some people, he, you know, he wanted to be a hustler. You know what I mean? And then when I started boxing, um, it was no need. I was like, nah, that's I, I ain't with that. That's just gonna get. You know, I I, I kind of felt like too. Sometimes, lads, I I think people. It's like glamorous. It's a glamour to it as well. Like, you know, you might be a basketball player, you might be a boxer, or you might be whatever, but you're a hustler. That's not, that's not you know, you're, you're a drug dealer or whatever. There's a prestige to that as well, you feel me? So I think some people, some people did it for the fame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, obviously, some people, I mean, I guess, some people do it for the fame, some people do it for, um, for the money. And I think he kind of wanted to do it for the fame in some ways. You know, like you're a big basketball star in that sense. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, you're a big, big time dude. Me, I wasn't with that. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to get the spots and stuff for try because, you know, my pops died in jail. You know what I'm saying? My step pops, he raised me, he died in jail. So I was like, yo, um, I'm not going, you know, I ain't trying to go that route. And, um, you know, boxing was always something that, uh, 
made me money and kept me out of jail, bro. You feel me? They made me money and kept me out of jail. When I didn't box, I got myself in all types of trouble, bro. All types of trouble. Man, I, I was destined to be dead or in jail. Destined, man. I, I got myself into so much shit when I wasn't in the boxing. And when, when I went back to boxing, everything went good, guys. That's why we got to build gyms, man. That's why I want to build gyms, you know what I mean, all around the country. Because boxing saves lives. It's just a fact. It saves lives. It gets discipline. Exercise helps. A exercise helps in so many ways. It's like medicine. You know what I mean? It's like it's little, little it's just like taking medicine. So when these guys exercise and they get better, they got something to do. So, but uh, you know, I say all I have to say. You know, I got. I, I remember me and him had a been through a lot, man. It's my homie though. We like brothers, man. And uh, and uh, I spoke to him yesterday, but it's ironic. Like I said, how you meet people. You never know. I met this guy in the one circumstances, and here we are. We've been friends. I want to say that was 80, 85, 86 since then. Hmm. That's crazy. Crazy. Crazy, Chad. Crazy. Crazy. And then as crazy is, I got other friends that I've known as long as him from the same time. Which which made which made me spark this conversation with my wife. I was like, yo, you know it's funny that my friend Alonzo never met my friend Marlon. And it was just like that simple. I was like, damn, you know, they never met and I've been through back and forth equal equal amount of of drama, you name it. Ups and downs, highs and lows with both of them. And they never met. I know them both since I was like 15, 16 years old, and I'm 50 years old, and they both like 51, 52 years old. Mm. No, that's the dude I want you to interview for your channel, though. This dude named Alonzo. Mm. This mad time of state, mad back and forth. <laughs> Definitely tell son to holla at me. We get it in. Real jam. And, you know, it was crazy because, like, when I was in Wingate, like, going to Wingate, when I first went to Wingate, I was just bugging, like, this is crazy. How can I be here with these adults and all these players? This ain't Bishop Lachlan. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't, you know what I'm saying? This ain't Bishop Lachlan, champ. This is, this is Wingate. Wingate was bad, y'all. I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't care what nobody tell y'all. Wingate was in no joke. You know what I mean? Wingate was like, yo, listen to me. When you go into Wingate in the 80s, Trust me, it was like you could die any day. Real talk. <laughs> now it's not you funny, could, but I heard I heard about Wingate and I heard that shit was out of control. Yo, champ, you could die any day going to school. Real talk. In the eighty, in the early eighties, mid eighties, Wingate was like yo, but it was crazy because it was like yo, I had to, I had to tell myself I gotta go back, I gotta go to school, right? Like when well, you can't stay home, I told you I had that strict aunt. You know what I'm saying? She was like, you gotta go, you gotta get out of the house and go to school. You gotta go to school. Cause I wasn't even trying to go to school. Like I remember like school started in September. I was like, yo, it's no way I'm going to boys and girls. You know what I'm saying? It's no way I'm getting up in the morning from East Flatbush and going away to boys and girls. And that's where they had me going, boys and girls. Because I was living in the towers. Then it was like, yo, uh, death. It was like, yo, you gonna, you know, they gonna put me in jail. How the hell I'm gonna get up every morning and go to Jeff? I was like, nah, we're gonna use this address. My mom's like, we're gonna use this address and we're gonna put you in um, the local school here. Yeah. So I was like, what's better, Erasmus or a Wing or um a Wingate? You know, and, and had 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 had, had lived, lived there in, in East Flatbush now like a year or so or nine months or whatever it was, uh eight to nine months, I kinda like, you know, I was feeling it out. I was, you know, getting to meet people, I knew mad people, whatever, whatever. And I was like trying to figure out what school I was going to. So I wanted to pick a win game. Went up there and was like, damn. Got in there and was like, yo, this is different, yo. This ain't this ain't this ain't risen Christ Lutheran school. This ain't uh this ain't Bishop Lockley. This is it. So um I you know I jumped in, was meeting people, whatever, whatever. I told you I seen my dude who I thought was the shooter who came to my crib. I was like, yo, that's him. He was there. Uh the dude that I had to fight with, he was there. And we never got cool. You got what I'm saying? So we never, it was never, we was never really cool again. And not even cool again, it was on, basically. Like, they came to the crib, 
you know what I'm saying? Nothing happened. Um, uh, you know what I mean? We, whatever, whatever, where it was. I think, I think my cousin Perry was there. Vaguely remember my cousin Perry. He lived next door. He was like, yo, um, I think he was there. And I think he might have, you know, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I can't really remember, but I do remember them coming to the block again. And some people on the block was like, but whatever, whatever, and they kind of got pushed away. And um, but I was never really cool with them. I knew like 45th was in like where I really wanted to be at. So he was in the school, uh, and his whole crew. Now, now, now mind you, they 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 had been writing graffiti together for years. So they had they was in the school. It was, but it was crazy because when I went to the school, when I got when I got to Wingate, it was a crew of people from Brownsville. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people from Brownsville, well, I won't say a lot, but a, a decent amount of people from Brownsville went to Wingate. So, bum. Um, you know, I started clicking up with the Brownsville because I knew people. Like, yo, that's so-and-so. Well, what else? So, it's Brownsville crew. I started like, like linking in with the Brownsville crew, you know, slowly but surely. I see it, you know, so, so sometimes they would uh, all catch the bus together, right? And sometimes I would go to Brownsville. And then I wound up moving to East New York. Matter of fact, so I started coming from East New York to Wingate, and as, as I was doing that, I was going back, you know, with the people from Brownsville, or I see them in the morning too, getting going to school. So as time went on, man, um, you know, I, I, I fit in. I started getting in. I started getting in with, with whatever what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Although I had had the, the, the intelligence, I you know, the book smarts, I had to survive. So I started. You know, clicking up with different people, and um, I had a dude. I had a dude. I hope oh, I told you he brought a Uzi to school one day, and he just, you know, you know, check this out. Good man was cool. He was, you know, he liked me. I was funny and shit. So we we bug out, and then uh, he wound up he wound up killing another dude that I knew, his friend in the school. So we was all we we all knew each other. So he wound up killing. My man's friend and my man was mad at me for a minute, like, yo, that's your man. He killed my man. What I you was mean? Like, killed, you say killed the killed the another kid who went to the school? Nah, and it, they, they they lived in the same neighborhood. It was all from like from like Utica Ave, all of them. It was deep. Utica Ave had a lot of huge amount of people that went to Wingate. Utica Ave was, you know, it was deep and. They was all in the same neighborhood, but he wound up killing somebody in their neighborhood, like two blocks apart. Like I'm talking like two, three blocks apart. One street, one street versus another street. That's just that's super. That's that's and he, simple. And he got knocked off and went to jail for that, or he was still in the school on the run or whatever. He was still free from it. Like he didn't get, you know, what I'm saying he didn't get caught for it or whatever. He didn't get. I don't know what nobody told, but the streets was like, yo, he killed. Killed my man. Oh, you know, they knew what it was. Like right? it happened like it happened. And he was still coming to school? Nah, he wasn't really coming to school, but I seen him. I would see him like, you know what I mean? I was everywhere and I would walk up you the cab, I go, you know what I'm saying? And I asked about him because he was cool. It was my boy, you know what I'm saying? I think he was wearing a lot of polo or was he boosting? I'm trying to think, was he boosting? I think, I think, I think, I think he was boosting something too. I think he was boosting. But he was selling drugs too, son. He was because he had he had some bread. He would come through with gold teeth, uh, gold rings, two, uh, four finger, three finger. So I'd be like, yo, you getting money? He was like, you know, he laughing and shit. So uh, he was a real serious kid, man. Thinking back, we was kids, man. Not even looking back, we was kids, man. And here we was, like. I guess thinking we was adults or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? We was just basically just kids to be free, you know what I mean? We was just out there. And he was he uh he wound up killing the dude in their neighborhood or a couple streets over, and the dude or other man, my other man, I don't really want to see, he died too. Or rest in peace. He died recently. I heard a couple years ago. He uh he was mad at me like, yo, your man killed my man. I'm like, I don't got nothing to do with that. Like. You, you want me to not like the dude, like you know what I'm saying, like, like not not be cool with the dude. I mean, I, you know, I ain't, I ain't know him like that. You know what I'm saying? So it was weird, but uh, it was crazy how we was just young kids, man, just cutting people was getting stabbed, um, sliced, shot, killed, go to jail, and this is all just in a small neighborhood. 
Brownsville, East New York, um, Flatbush, uh, Bush Rouge. It was just all right there. It was all different high schools. We used to go to different high schools last. We used to go to other high like, We'd go up to. Man, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy, son. We was really, we was really living in the time. But I'm sure, you know, the 50s had their gangs. You know, white people had their gangs. Spanish gangs. Definitely. But, Ain't nothing new under the sun. All this facts, shit been going down. Facts. Facts. You know, I guess even bringing guns to school, huh? Well, you know, the, when crack hit, it made a demand for heavy artillery. So once 87, 88 hit, I mean, I'm sure it was in the streets before then too, but when, 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 when crack started getting crazy, that's when you had kids running around with Uzis and Max and Tex. The, the, the streets was flooded, bro. The streets was flooded, like, you know what I mean? It was a monster amount of guns in my hood, in my projects, just in my projects alone. The artillery that dudes had was ridiculous, you feel me? Like, niggas had AKs. Like, you know what I mean? The bro G.O., rest in peace, son had an AK in Howard. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? Like, wow. rest in peace, Tango. Tango in Brownsville houses, son got killed with an AK-47 wow. in, in Brownsville. You feel what I'm saying? Like, these streets was out of control with, with guns. Real talk. Like, in the late, in the 80s and 90s. And now, bro. And now, my nigga. And now. You, I know you heard about the 16-year-old girl who got shot and killed coming home from school the other day in the Bronx. Like... I literally drove past the crime scene, my nigga. I said, damn, I saw the yellow tape. I said, damn, it looked like somebody got shot. And that shit just came right on the news in, in my car. I was like, yo, these street, yo, bro, these streets is out of control. Guns is out of control. It's it's New York City, bro. It's New York City. This city crazy. Like, we grow up in this shit, but it's crazy. It said, wealthy, it said the most, the most of the wealthy people, the people, the rich people left New York. Yo, I seen, heard on the news the other day, they, they got a survey out. They said 59% of New Yorkers say that they are planning on moving out of here, man. Yeah. Everybody want to come to Florida. People trying to get out of here, bro. It's fine. You can't even go. Like, come on. Two days before that, a, a 61-year-old lady got shot and killed just going to the store right quick. Came out the store, dude started banging. She got hit in her back and got killed. You feel what I'm saying? Two days after that is the 16-year-old girl. A few days before that, 12-year-old kid in Brooklyn sitting in a car. He got hit by a stray bullet dead. Three people hit by a stray bullet and killed within two weeks, bro. Like, shit out of control for real, for real. Like, you understand? So the, the scary shit is these kids is out here now reliving how we how we was growing up. In the in the late eighties and the nineties, I mean in the in the eighties and the nineties, they yeah. starting to relive that shit out here now today. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and I'm not trying to glorify, it. you know, kids bringing guns to school. I think there was, a, like you said, it was it was a result of of the crack era as well as uh, the circumstances in which we was living. Like a lot of my kids, a lot of people was on crack, bro. A lot of people got on drugs, man, and it ruined so many families, yeah. and it took down so many people, bro. Like, so here we were now, kids, my mom was on crack, you feel me? So here we was, my, my, my pops was, 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 was on the run, uh, I think at the time I was in jail, and I'm, you know, I'm the only child. I'm free to do whatever I want to do, whatever I, whatever, whatever I got to do, whatever I can do to survive. You know what I'm saying? So I had to make it. I had to figure out, yeah, day to day, where I'm gonna eat at, what I'm on my next meal. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I don't know what's, what I'm gonna do. So, you know, I'm out there trying to get jobs, everything I could do to try to make it, man. But then, you know, um, it was a result, though. It was a result of what drugs had done to our parents. You know what I mean? To my parents and. Um, just you know, hard life circumstances, man. You know what I mean. So I, you know, I try to still now my kids, man. I try to tell them, yo, work hard, work, make it happen, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? Because it's rough. It's a rough world if you don't. That's a fact, bro. That's a fact. But that's just like you were saying. 
it was the it was the it, it was crack ruined that whole family structure so kids was basically in the streets raising themselves bro dudes was 14 years old running around with with uzis because they just they parents wasn't wasn't putting in that work bro because they was gone you feel what i'm saying so that shit was crazy don't, don't bro let me ask you a question let me ask you a question lad i mean Come on, champ. Be honest. You, you, it must be millions and millions of more of us now than it was then. So what's gonna happen to the future of the kids? What you mean? You mean kids that's growing up in the ghettos like we grew up? Yeah, it's much more of them now than it was before, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna keep it real, bro. The future be looking dim. The future be looking dim, man. Like, wait, wait, what's going on now in these streets? With how these kids is now in these streets, like they five times worse than like we were, bro. Like we we it was wild as hell growing up in Brownsville, but it was a little bit of structure. It was a little bit of structure in in those neighborhoods with certain individuals that wasn't trying to hear certain shit. Nowadays, bro, that shit is though it's just it's just anarchy, my nigga. It's like that movie Lord of the Flies, bro. You understand? It's kids with no adults leading themselves no even no ogs in the streets because now you know the music and all that shit that shit divided it, it put a divide between the young niggas and the older niggas now the young niggas and the older niggas be beefing with each other you feel what i'm saying like niggas don't even fuck with young niggas young niggas be disrespecting older niggas like it wasn't like that when we was coming up you couldn't get away with shit like that too much like what you mean? What you mean? They don't, they don't like old niggas? Yeah, it's like, bro, you know, the music shit. You know how you see memes online all the time. Yo, this is yeah, this is my 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 era. This is y'all era. And they show niggas with pocketbook. Like they'll show a classic picture of Nas, and then they'll show a nigga with pot with a pocketbook and some makeup on and something. So that that type of that type of feeling about 